toughest of all the salt and hardening courses in Great Britain today are those used for conditioning paratroops. For their designers knew well that of all soldiers, these men would be most reliant on their own resources. Trained to live on very little food and be without shelter for days and nights together, they must keep in the best physical condition. Indoor jumps are made to accustom the men to the impact of landing. Finally, the big day comes when the trainee makes his first jump. When that door shuts, there's only one way back to work, the short way. As their friends look anxiously skywards, these young soldiers of the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion show how well they have measured up to the problems of airborne operations. Paratroops hit the ground fast. It's like jumping from the roof of a car moving at 10 miles per hour. And when they have completed their training, each man proudly wears the wings of the Canadian Sky Troop. Wings soon to be known and feared by the Germans in occupied Europe. Another airport was needed in the south of England. It was needed in a hurry. And last June, the Royal Canadian Engineers were given the job of building it. So every bit of available equipment and every new idea was put to work. Sixty thousand cubic yards of earth were graded, forty-five thousand tons of rock were crushed, and then two hundred thousand square yards of concrete were spread. The RCEs were a busy lot. The summer slipped by, and gradually, the great airport took shape. But even before the job was complete, giant bombers were taking off from runways that had been finished. Less than four months after work had commenced, the great new field was ready to hand over to the Royal Air Force. The ceremony was simple. Brigadier Melville, on behalf of the Army, and Air Vice Marshal Baker of the Royal Air Force, took the salute. Then they inspected a guard of honor composed of the men who had built the airport and the men and women who will use it. a credit to the abilities of the Royal Canadian Engineers, but another example of how the various branches of His Majesty's Armed Forces are working together toward the common goal. As Invasion Day draws inevitably closer, there must be more and more rehearsals of landing on hostile shores. Although the details of exercise pirate differed from the others, it had a common purpose. Every detail must be learned by heart. Every movement must be precisely timed. Every man must know what he does and when. Combined ops means the smooth working together of every branch of the services. Only in that way can the real thing succeed.
exercise pirate and all the other exercises are, of course, only a friend. A dress rehearsal, preparing for the day of assault. When that day dawns, the victory will be achieved by applying the principles learned in the long series of exercises. It isn't all fighting and no playing for the Canadians in Italy. At Potenza, they took time off to hold a divisional sports meet, and for a day, the Italian arena, scene of many a fascist meeting, held over 1,500 enthusiastic spectators. Peter Sternberg, CBC commentator, was there and followed the 880-yard dash lap by lap. The winners were Corporal D.R. Cameron and Bombardier L.W. Brooks. They have tug of wars in Italy, too. This one was between the Divisional Artillery and CIB and was won by the infantrymen. The obstacle race held few hazards for these fighting veterans. Prizes were awarded and to many it was reminiscent of similar scenes back in Great Britain. The sun doesn't always shine in sunny Italy. In a recent letter, a Canadian Army cameraman wrote, The rains have come and I don't mean maybe. I've never seen it rain so hard any place before. The roads are all switchback and dirt roads too. We have to go through some of the toughest diversions that I've ever seen. And with the rain, the mud is just like grease. But rain or shine, the Canadian Army must be fed. Petrol must be supplied to keep the tanks, the jeeps, and all parts of a great mechanized army running smoothly. All through the Sicilian campaign and in Italy, units of the Royal Canadian Army Service Corps have worked day and night in all weather to keep up the daily requirements. With today's mechanized army, the problem of supplies for men and motors is tremendous. But it's all in the day's work for the smooth running RCASC. Our tents in a row, we pitch in the snow just like we soldier men. Poor beans, hard tanks, la 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 la. Poor hungry soldiers, la 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 la. la. There are lots of reasons for celebrating Thanksgiving Day, even in Italy. And what would Thanksgiving Day be without a turkey? But neither the pleasure of a sports meet nor the torrential downpour of the Italian fall can halt the remorseless advance of Montgomery's 8th Army, and with it the Canadians. Slowly, relentlessly, the push moves on. Potenza is left behind and the infantrymen move up, town by town, past buildings devastated by the retreating enemy. The road to Rome is not an easy one. Some conquerors have reached it, others have not. But now the liberators are moving up toward Rome and beyond. For them, there will be no halt until the fortress Europe isn't a fortress anymore. <laughs>